Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So you may have noticed there's a new kind of title sequence um, to my channel and that has been done by Bex the Bookworm on TikTok. So go and check out their account, I will leave um, a link below if I can. So yes, thank you very, very much for doing that for me. It looks absolutely stunning. So here I've got a warm mug of matcha in a very... <sighs> See, I think this could fit for all year round, the fox and the leaves. Because I was going to say autumnal, but it, it could be wintry if we assume the leaves were evergreen. So today I am bringing you a book haul which has absolutely no theme to it as my next book haul will be. It's just a big bag of books that I got from um, a little hidden bookshop in a hidden alleyway. I can't, I can't remember if there was a name to the bookshop. Um, even if there was, if you catch it, it just said um, book sale from one pound. I was like, um, yeah. So most of them are from there. Let me just collect these up. Yes, so these ones and these ones are from there. And then this one, but these two are from an actual bookshop, so not books that not bought secondhand and bought new. So yes. So the first book I'm going to show you is Hotel Alpha by Mark Watson. And um, this retails for £14.99 and I got it for £3. Okay. Um, so, as per usual, I'm going to read the blurb because I'm not very good at describing books at all and I end up giving a spoiler. So, I'm just safe and I go with the book blurb. Three decades ago, Howard York founded the most extraordinary hotel in London, the Hotel Alpha. A self-made man, Howard believes that you can create your own look. And when he's in the room, there is a sense that anything is possible. Graham, the concierge, has been behind the Alpha's front desk since the day the hotel opened and knows everything about it. Kaz, or Chaz, I think it's Kaz. Howard's blind adopted son has almost never ventured outside his walls. Both of them believe that the Alpha gives them everything they need until two mysterious disappearances raise questions that no one seems to be, seems willing to answer. As the years forge ahead, Graham and Kaz must ask themselves whether Howard's vision of the perfect hotel has been built on secrets as well as dreams. Captivating, brilliant and full of surprises, Hotel Alpha is an ingenious novel about the incidental and life-changing ways in which we connect with one another. So, yes, this sounded super interesting and of course the cover art is absolutely stunning. So, yes. The next book I'm going to show you is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Now this retails for £6.99 and I got it for £1. Mark. Um, and so I'm sure you've heard about Carol the Caroline before, but here's the blurb if not. Sometimes a door is closed for a very good reason. There is something strange about Caroline's new home. It's not the mist or the cat that always seems to, seems to be watching her, nor the signs of danger that Miss Spink and Miss Forcible, her new neighbours, read in the leaves. It's the other house, the one behind the old door in the drawing room. Another mother and father with black mountain eyes and papery skin are waiting for Coraline to join them there and they want her to stay with them forever. She knows that if she ventures through that door, she may never come back. I love the film. I've been watching it on repeat throughout the autumn time and I thought I would read the book as well. Then the next book is a non-fiction and I got it in the history section of this particular bookshop um, and it is Paris Between Empires 1814 to 1852 by Philip Mansell which I just thought would be really really interesting to look at. This retails for £25 and I got it for five. Goodness me. Um, so, Paris between 1814 and 1852 was the capital of Europe, a city of power and pleasure, a magnet for, for people of all nationalities. 
nationalities that exerted an influence far beyond the borders of France. Paris was the stage where the great conflicts of the age between nationalism and cosmopolitanism, revolution and royalism, socialism and cat capitalism, atheism and Catholicism were fought out before the audience of Europe. As Prince Metternich said, when Paris sneezes, Europe catches a cold. Not since Imperial Rome has one city so dominated European life. Paris Between Empires tells the story of this golden age, far from the entry of the Allies into Paris on the 31st of March 1814, after the, after the defeat of Napoleon I, to the, pro to the proclamation of his nephew, Louis Napoleon, as Napoleon III in the Modèle de Ville um, on 2nd of December 1852. During those years, Paris the new seat of the parliamentary government was a truly cosmopolitan capital home to Rossini. Oh, I'm going to ruin these names. So yes, so there's a lot of political turbulence, all that kind of stuff, and I thought it would be very, very interesting to read. And I'm not often a non-fiction reader, but I thought I'd go for it, and evidently I thought I would get a big head one so <laughs> there you go next uh, there's this book called the four letters of love by niall williams this one retails for oh, it doesn't actually say they cut off the bit where it says where it retails for but i got it for two pounds so Nicholas Coughlin is 12 when God speaks to his father, William, telling him to give up his job and devote his life to painting. Nicholas and his mother are left alone and adrift as his father sporadically disappears to the other side of Ireland, where he dubs his canvases in the Atlantic light, obeying what he ardently believes to be God's command. Across the country, on an island off the West Coast, lives Isabel Rummel with her parents and her brother, Sean, whose spellbinding musical gift has been silenced by a seizure, which has left him unable to walk or speak. Isabel is sent away to a convent school in Galway, but, but burdened by the guilt at the fate of her brother, she takes the first opportunity to make what looks like an escape. Nicholas and Isabel were made for each other, but how will they ever know? Four Letters of Love is a novel about destiny, acceptance, and the tragedies and miracles of everyday life. Most of all, it is an unforgetting tale about the illuminating power of love and how all our stories meet in the end. So, that sounded like a delightful read. Next, I've got a few, went into the classics section, and got a few. So, I got a, an Ernest, Hem um, one from Ernest Hemingway, one from Mark Twain, and one from Fyodor Dostoevsky. Or Dostoevsky. Sorry, uh, people are going to be very, very upset that I can't pronounce those names. Right, so, first, uh, A Farewell to Arms by H Ernest Hemingway. Um, in 1918, Ernest Hemingway went to war, to the war to end all wars. He volunteered for ambulance services in Italy, was wounded and twice decorated. Out of his experiences came A Farewell to Arms. Hemingway's description of war is unforgettable. He recreates the fear, the comradeship, the courage of his young American volunteer, and the men and women he meets in Italy with total conviction. But A Farewell to Arms is not only a novel of war. In it, Hemingway also create, created a love story of immense drama and uncompromising passion. So that sounded like a brilliant first Hemingway book to read. So next, Mark Twain, a Connecticut Yankee at King Arthur's Court. You can definitely tell that it's secondhand by the little drawings that evidently the son or daughter or even owner of the book did. Um, and by the way, this one retails for £8.99 and I got it for £2, so that was brilliant. Um, you know about the the transmigration of souls. Do you know about the trans transposition of epochs and bodies? So Hank Morgan, mechanic and factory supervisor from Hartford, Hartford, Connecticut, introduces his strange history. 
which begins when he wakes up to find himself in 6th century England. And so Mark Twain introduces us to the results. Satiric, satanic, anguished and anarchic. Anarchic. Yeah. Of imaginary confrontation between the old, between the new 19th century America and old England. Rich comedy and extravagant romance permeate the narrative, but these are undercut by a darkness and a depth of seriousness which give the work which give the work an, um, an ambivalence, the product of Twain's own divided attitude. A benign fant a fantasy becomes an apocalyptic vision of terrifying violence and destruction. A Connecticut Yankee at King Arthur's Court is a superbly entertaining novel. It is also a profoundly disturbing one, so that sounded very, very interesting. And next up is Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. Crime. What crime? My killing a loathsome half a harmful louse, a filthy old money lender woman, and you call that a crime? Raskolnikov, a destitute and desperate former student, wand wanders through the slums of St. Petersburg and commits a random murder without remorse or regret. He imagines himself to be a great man, a Napoleon acting for a higher purpose beyond conventional moral law. But as he embarks on a dangerous game of cat and mouse with a suspicious police investigator, Raskolnikov is pursued by the growing voice of his conscience and finds the noose of his own guilt tightening around his neck. Only Sonia, a downtrodden prostitute, can offer him a chance, the chance of redemption. The vivid translation by David, Mac David Macduff has been acclaimed as the most accessible version of Dostoevsky's great novel, rendering its dialogue with a unique force and naturalism. Cool. So yes, there you go. And then these two are from an independent bookshop. Um, and the first is Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. I've been meaning to read this for so so long and I finally picked it up. The book that sparked a national conversation exploring everything from eradicated black history to the in inextricable link between race and race. Why I'm no longer talking to white people about race is the essential handbook for anyone who wants to understand race and race relations in Britain today, which is exactly me. Um, we all need to be educating ourselves. Um, and making an effort to educate ourselves um, through means of literature, through documentary, through movies, um, and through also speaking to people of colour in our lives. Um, a range of people of colour, because that is such a broad, broad word. Um, but yes, uh, I'm definitely a big believer in educating yourself and not just expecting others to educate you. So. Um, this is one slice of what I'm doing because black lives still matter um, and it's not just a trend that turned up in May. We need to be carrying on forth pursuing the eradication of the, uh, of the racist and prejudiced system that is currently ruling our world, not just country. Hello, so this is me um, editing the next day and I realised it cut me off when I started talking about this book so I'm just going to quickly summarise this now. Well, I say summarised, I'm still going to read it. Um, so the last book was The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton um, and this grabbed me within the first sentence of the blog because it says, on an autumn day and if you hadn't already noticed I am a big lover of autumn. Uh, it's an obsession, really. Uh, an addiction, in fact. Um, so, on an autumn day in 1686, 18-year-old Nella Ortman arrives at a grand house in Amsterdam to begin her new life as the wife of a wealthy merchant, Johannes Brandt. Though curiously distant, he, re he presents her with an extraordinary wedding gift a cabinet-sized replica of their home. It is to be furnished by an elusive miniaturist whose tiny creations ring eerily true. As Nella uncovers the, secret, the secrets of her new household, she realises the escalating dangers that they face. The miniaturist seems to hold their fate in her hands, but does she plan to save or destroy them? So, 
that sounded super super interesting um it says on the front that it's um now a bbc tv series so i will be watching that once i finish this book so yes on with um when i started filming again after i realized the camera had stopped <laughs> So thank you very much for watching this video, please like and subscribe if you did. I will leave my TikTok and Instagram and Goodreads down below if you would like to get in touch. And so yes, please leave a comment of any new books you have purchased recently and I will see you in the next video. Bye!